So I really wanted to do some more preview videos and I thought this is not a perfect time to make actually a match preview and I've been working on this quite hard over the past um, 12 hours or so to really get something nice interesting facts together put a little bit statistics in there as well so that's really what I wanted to do also the kicker to really get this going was the fact that I had the jersey matchup for France Uruguay wrong because Uruguay is the home team and as you will see this switches completely the story I think that it will be Uruguay in light blue and France in white as they have always been playing at the World Cup another thing that I will feature so this was the main reason of doing it um, I can actually show you I have one France jersey in this 2010 matchup France was wearing this jersey the only time they've been wearing that it's a wonderful jersey. I think it's the second best after the Spain jersey at that particular World Cup. But of course it won't be remembered that well because yeah, France stunk at this tournament, especially after the Uruguay game. So yeah, let's get right to it. I will make another one for Brazil Belgium a little bit later. So it should all be up in time for you to be ready for the game. Let's start the presentation. So, my official match preview, uh, just combined a few facts um, and also looked at the current form and so we'll see it. As I said, I had the match up wrong in my videos yesterday and from before it is Uruguay is the assigned home team, France is the away team. The game will be played in Nizhny Novgorod and it starts at 5 o'clock Moscow time, so this is 4 o'clock in Central Europe and it is 2 o'clock on the East Coast, uh, 10 o'clock in the East Coast. I got that one wrong. So let's get right to it. Let's look at the record in competitive matches, which means in this case it is all World Cup matches. The first matchup was in 1966 in, at the group stage. It was played in London and Uruguay won 2-1. Uh, at this point France was actually a disappointing team they were not among the favorites and they were in the same group as England and Mexico, which is interesting at a later point. Um, completely the opposite in 2002 in Busan. France was the super team back then, similar to Germany this year, similar to Spain uh, four years ago. France had won the, Euro, the Euros in 2000, was, were, were defending World Cup champions from 1998. They won the Confederations Cup in 2001, also in South Korea and Japan and it, they seemed unstoppable but they lost their first game by a goal to Senegal and then in the second game they actually needed a result but Henri was sent off uh, half in the first half and France held on to a 0-0. I remember that match being particularly dreary. I think there was one chance on each side. So 0-0 France is out and it was also the opening game for both of these teams in 2010, where I showed you the jersey uh, just before. Again, a 0-0 draw. So those uh, matches between France and Uruguay are not really the screamers. And again, this game was not that bad for France yet, because 0-0 seemed a respectable result, because Uruguay was defending well, and France didn't got little going. But it fell all apart for France later on, where, whereas Uruguay went through. In 2002, both teams went out after the group stage. In 1966, Uruguay made it to the quarterfinals. In 2010, Uruguay made it a uh, fourth place finish, whereas France completely flamed out. So if I'm French, I'm not liking Uruguay as an opponent in my World Cup. Although I have to say this year at least, a uh, quarterfinal extra France, while it might be disappointing, it is not the bad results it was in the previous three matchups. Let's look at the accolades. Who are those teams? Well, Uruguay is a biggie. Uh, they have four world titles, of two of which were World Cups, 1924 and 1928, were the only Olympic Games that FIFA now recognizes as World Championships, but not as World Cup wins, so that's why they have an asterisk there. France won the World Cup in 1998. They were runners-up in 2006 as well. Uh, continental champions, uh, Uruguay is... Uh, has the most titles of any South American nation. Again, most of these titles, oh, sorry, most of these titles are uh, from the beginning of uh, 
the World Cup stages. So uh, we have the most uh, mostly early 1916 in the first edition, but they uh, won as late as 2011. Whereas France won the Euros twice in 1984 and in 2000. Uh, special players: Golden Ball, um, Uruguay the gold, the best player of the tournament twice in 1930, the first in Euro uh, tournament in Uruguay. Jose Nazazzi, their captain, and in 2010, Diego Forlan uh, was kind of a little bit a surprise winner, but he had a really great tournament, and I think no one really complained. It was just odd that it was uh, winner was from the first place team. Uh, France had the best player in 2016 at Zidane, which of course was before the final. If it was would have been done after the final, I'm not sure if he would have gotten uh, that award simply due to the fact that he made the headbutt. Both had also the best scorer of the tournament. Well, uh, Forlan was a shared scorer and the official best scorer was Müller because of assists. I gotta have, I gotta have a, a second say on that because if we look at it, yes, Müller had more assists, but uh, he scored many goals when the game was already decided. But that can also say, be said for Just Fontaine. If you look at my blog on the greatest World Cup scorers, Fontaine is not among them, although he scored 13 goals in a single World Cup. So this is an amazing uh, performance in itself. But again, most of the score, uh, goals were not important goals. But yeah, from all we can say, Uruguay has the more accolades, but France has, is more recent. So kind of that probably evens itself out, although Uruguay is now on a golden decade, if you want to say so. Current form. These are now the matches uh, that are played. As we, uh, I took here into account what uh, what were the expected results according to my model, um, and also to, took a little bit of account into the goal difference. Um, kind of was the expected goal difference for that. I used, of course, betting data, and compared the actual result versus um, the achieved, um, like very, very uh, the expected versus the achieved result. So uh, we have um, the one zero win. Let's start with Europe. Right on the bottom is the first game most recent is on top. So uh, Uruguay started out with slightly over 80% against Egypt and a although they got the win it was not a great performance, slightly worse against uh, Saudi Arabia. Against Russia 3-0 this was a big win in a make or break game so even if Russia was not the powerhouse that everyone expected the 3-0 of course puts it over the top and then as an underdog uh, por uh, against Port Portugal Uruguay really performed well. So their form is kind of on the upswing. They really have been hitting their stride and they have an average of 87%. France is a slightly different story. Ah, oh, and I should have adjusted the graph that is here at 100%, 100% to the right. Um, so Australia was kind of a slow start. Peru was a vital win. I don't count the Denmark, I only counted half because they had they made many many substitutions. So uh, Denmark was uh, since was a, a bad performance, especially since it was a draw and then and France was still favorite. And against Arch Argentina had a near perfect per, uh, performance. Maybe giving up three goals was not as great, but you know overall this was um, near perfect. So I have France at an average form of seventy eight percent at the moment. Now, lastly, let's look at the quarterfinal record. We have Uruguay has was seven times in the top eight, including this year, 1930, 1950, 54, 66, 1970, and 2010, uh, and also 2018. And um, in the first two World Cups, there were not wasn't really a quarterfinal stage. They made it to the semifinal or the final group stage. So we have only really four quarterfinals, three of which they advanced. Out of. They beat England in 54 4-2. Uh, they lost to Germany in 66, which um, is still shrouded a little bit uh, in suspicion because there was an English referee and together with uh, England Argentina quarterfinal. Yeah, uh, Uruguayans and South Americans in general were not happy because that quarterfinal was refereed by a German referee. Uh, in Mexico, Uruguay beat the Soviet Union 1-0, which was kind of a surprise, but Uruguay got a slow start into that tournament, to be honest. And then in 2010, the dramatic quarterfinal against Ghana, where it was 1-1, uh, Ghana missing a penalty, Suarez being sent off for a handball on the line in the last minute, hand, uh, 
Ghana misses the penalty, Uruguay wins on penalties. And then for France, they finished eight times in the top eight. 938, 58, 82, 86, 98, 2006, 14, and 18. So, as again, more recently, France is uh, a dominant nation. Uh, again, there were a few group stages, uh, namely 1982, um, but they were France finished. Um, I think it was fourth in the tournament. Um, so there was a group stage and the rest is all real quarterfinals. So we have a 1938 on home soil, they lost to Italy. Uh, also a very interesting match as Italy played in all black um, and was cheered by the crowd. But um, they really didn't like, uh, France was kind of the last bastion of democracy and Italy was all um, fascists at the moment. So it was an ugly match that Italy won 3-1. Then in 58, 4-0 against Northern Ireland. In 1986, 1-1 against Brazil in one of the best matches of that World Cup. France won on penalties. Uh, they also won on penalties in 1998. A match that I remember for not seeing because I had to take a test at the university. I only saw a few pieces and I watched highlights afterwards. I was pretty unhappy about that. It's one of the few quarterfinals of late that I really haven't seen. Um, and yeah, I know that Bajo missed a big chance in overtime. Uh, it was basically the two sides were neutralizing each other and you knew that those are two great teams that can make it far in the tournament. And basically the winner would could go well go on to win it. And so it proved France won on penalties. Di Biagio hitting the crossbar. And I think it was also one of those penalty shootouts where... Um, I think France missed first and then it got, uh, the other one got saved by Italy. I think it was Albertini. And then uh, everyone hit it, especially the young ones, Trezegui and Henri. And then Di Biagio could level the score and hits the crossbar. I still remember him going down. This is one of the iconic images. It was also the first match of Zidane back from a two-game suspension after seeing a red card in Saudi Arabia. And then, of course, um, 2006, the great quarterfinal against Brazil, where Zidane played the match of his life um, and made his only assist to Henri, who scored the winner in a game that was seen as a final but was really dominated by this wonderful performance of Brazil uh, of uh, Zidane and Brazil being a complete disappointment. And the last quarterfinal that France actually lost, so they lost two quarterfinals. Um, and won the other three or uh, four, but only two in reg regulation. That one was actually uh, a match that Germany scored the winning goal in the, I think it was the 10th or 15th minutes, very er er early on. And I, I remember thinking the whole game, for, uh, Germany has this in the back. I mean, Frost has half chances, but nothing really big. So um, I remember that game very, very, very well, that uh, France, despite having all these offensive powers in Italy, they never threatened. And um, I hope it won't be a similar game as this one was. And now you saw this already in my official preview, but once again, I flipped now. And we see Uruguay in light blue, and I expect France to be in all white as they have in, been in every matchup. Although I can very well see France playing in a dark blue, it would also make enough contrast, but I really think it will be this matchup. So I give it 99%, although I have, maybe I should give it 995, but I still think it will be France in white, because that's what it has always been, and that's why they will kick me out. Uh, they will kick this and will play in dark blue, which I would actually like much better. I France favored 60% to 40% and only a 29% chance that it goes to overtime. Well, this to me is the most intriguing matchup, um, especially since it's a more proper probably most even in all will. Lots will depend whether Cavani will play or not. That's how I feel about it. Well, let me know how you see this matchup and if you like these previews and I will do previews for the other four matches relatively soon. Up until then. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. 
Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.